Our next speaker is Laura King. Laura is the Curator's Professor of Psychological Science at the University of Missouri. Laura's award-winning research in personality and social psychology examines the psychology of the good life. She explores how people create meaning and identity in their lives and how these processes relate to health and happiness. Today, she'll be sharing a talk titled, Your Life is Probably Pretty Meaningful, Five Myths About Meaning in Life. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I am batting clean up. Here we go. So uh, human beings, when they think about what makes life meaningful or what meaning in life really is, often there's this light motif, right? This, it's in the comics, right? We're going to climb the mountain. And uh, some w wise old sage is going to explain to us the mystery of meaning in life. And what I'm going to try to do today is to uh, fill in his uh, bubble there with how he might answer that question if he, in the unlikely event, that he was well aware of the science of meaning in life and for some perverse reason decided to share it with you in a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> this going to work? No. OK. Can we move it? Thank you. So some myths about meaning in life. And they will get more and more crazy as I go, I promise. All right. Myth number one, meaning in life is ineffable. Uh, meaning in life is quite effable, in my opinion. It's certainly not uniquely ineffable in all of the things that social psychologists and personality psychologists are willing to define and study. Love is ineffable too, but we have that. <laughs> uh, aggression, anger, personality, what is a person, right? These are all ineffable constructs. But for some reason, meaning in life, oh no, don't even go there. We're scientists, we can F whatever we like, and we're going to do that with meaning in life. Yeah, we can. We can come up with a definition. Here's one, an excellent definition proposed by Mike Steger. Meaning is the web of connections, understandings, and interpretations that help us comprehend our experience and formulate plans directing our energies to the achievement of our desired future. Meaning provides us with the sense that our lives matter, that they make sense, and that they are more than the sum of our seconds, days, and years. Is that the perfect definition of meaning in life? Probably not. Is there something vaguely missing? Of course. There's something vaguely missing about everything we do. Why is it that meaning in life is, you know, we shouldn't go there. Leave it to the philosophers. We can't even define it. Sure we can. There it is. Almost all psychological definitions of meaning in life include these three facets, as you'll have noticed in uh, Mike Steger's definition, significance and purpose, which are often thought of as sort of motivational and existential concerns. And then a third component about, the, about making sense or have, making connections or being coherent, right, which is a considered a more cognitive component of the experience of meaning in life. We can also operationally define meaning in life, not just conceptually, but operationally. We do that by just asking people how meaningful their lives are. We ask people, OK, scale from 1 to 7. I understand my life's meaning, or my life has a clear sense of purpose. Ah, oh, horrible, right? Oh, no, is this what Yalom was talking about? Is this what Franco was talking about? I'm not sure, right? Maybe up on the top of a mountain, no. But down here in the world of science, we ask people all the time, how angry do you feel? How satisfied are you with your life? Why can't we ask people whether their lives are meaningful? Why is that somehow some horrible <laughs> betrayal of this wonderful construct of meaning in life. Homely, horrifying. And yet, these simple self-reports of meaning in life are related to some very important outcomes. 
You, if people who say, yeah, my life is pretty meaningful, are better off than people who say their lives are not meaningful on a host of things. And most of these um, outcomes, these are prospective studies, right? So meaning in life predicts greater quality of life, better self-reported health, occupational adjustment, lower risk for uh, psychological disorders, less suicidal ideation, even in the presence of depression, more social appeal. People who say their lives are meaningful are judged by others as more socially appealing, slower age-related cognitive de decline, lower risk of Alzheimer's disease, lower risk of mortality, lower risk of heart attack, lower risk of stroke. So yeah, it's a scale from one to seven, it's a self-report questionnaire, and yet it relates to very important outcomes in the very ways that we th would think that it would if these questionnaires were getting at something like meaning in life. The second myth about meaning in life that I'm hoping to dispel is that meaning in life is mysterious and hard. It's just some kind of crazy thing that you just keep seeking and struggling over your entire life and you'll never really get it. Not, ter not true. <laughs> Now, there's lots of really complex things and deep, deep things that relate to meaning in life. But there are also some really simple things, really simple lessons that come from the social psychological literature, experimental research on what uh, influences meaning in life. A pretty good mood. That's kind of doable. It's not surprising, right, that people who say their lives are meaningful say that they're more often in a pretty good mood. And it perhaps isn't surprising, and therefore that correlation goes in both directions. But more importantly for these purposes, putting people in a good mood increases their sense that their lives are meaningful. Manipulating mood. And we have all kinds of ways to do that. By giving somebody a valentine, or some candy, or telling them that you love their talk. <laughs> Keep that in mind later. Um, makes their lives feel more meaningful. There is a causal link between being in a good mood and meaning in life. Social connections. The body of evidence on social exclusion is oftentimes thought of as showing right, that, well, you exclude someone. One of the most robust findings is that their experience of purposeful existence, their experience that their life is significant and meaningful plummets. But the opposite of that, what that tells us, is that when we are socially connected, life feels pretty meaningful. Boy, recently in my lab, my students and I um, have been looking at the relationship between the presence of reliable associations in the environment and the experience of meaning in life. That third component of meaning in life, that cognitive uh, coherence, the sense that, the, that stimuli are making sense. Um, since this is kind of the weirdest one, let me just briefly allow, allow me to there we go. So we might have seen in this um, kind of wacky psych science paper, we showed that we showed people these pictures of trees, right? We had 16 pictures of trees representative of the four seasons. Half of the people saw the trees um, in seasonal order, and the other half saw them in random order. And then they rated their meaning in life. People who were exposed to these trees in the seasonal pattern rated their lives as more meaningful. That's that blue bar for study one. And importantly, in a, in a subsequent study, we showed that it's not just the fact that it's the seasons. Exposure to a novel pattern also led to enhan enhanced sense of meaning in life. Now, is meaning in life super hard? Probably not. Positive mood is the default. Most people are pretty happy. Social connection is the default. Most of us have connections with others. Reliable associations is the default, right? I mean, we live in a world characterized by tons of routine. Meaning in life seems to be related to the things that we think of as just the typical aspects of our everyday lives. Myth number three, meaning in life requires reflection, construction, and deep thinking. We need to sit around and really, really think hard about what it is that makes our lives meaningful. We need to construct a sense of meaning and overlay it on the re reality of chaos. That is not true. <laughs> um, first of all, 
thinking a lot is no way to experience meaning. Um, measures of like sort of cognitive reflection, such as the cognitive reflection task, are mildly negatively correlated with ratings of meaning in life. Moreover, there's no literature showing that thinking super hard about meaning in life leads to more meaning. Searching for meaning is negatively related to the experience of meaning. The meaning-making literature shows us that people who grind away trying to create meaning are no more likely to actually experience meaning itself. And in terms of this cognitive component of meaning, I want to point out this fun aspect of our capacity to uh, perceive associations in the environment. Uh, long ago, uh, James Gibson said that if the specifying invariances are normally available, an active observer can extract them and does not have to construct them. If to the extent that meaning is about connections in the environment, we perceive those automatically. Our, our perceptual systems are well equipped without effortful reflection to pull out the reliable associations that exist in the environment. This is perhaps the most provocative. Reality is meaningless. No, it isn't. <laughs> I know, right? Yalom said it was, and all, so many French existentialists have tried to assure you, and you believe them, that reality is meaningless. I ask you to consider a rat in a Skinner box, right? So we put the rat in the Skinner box, and we find out that it will quickly learn the association between its behavior and reward. Or think about Pavlov's dogs, right? A quickly quickly learn the association between stimuli in the environment. These animals, in their behavior, in these highly artificial environments, have a lesson to teach us about meaning in life. Or I should say, about whether reality is meaningless. The readiness that these animals show in these artificial environments would be a horrible vulnerability if the natural world they lived in was innately chaotic. These animals, who have no other expectancy, as far as we know, show in their behavior, these animals who have one thing they want to do, survive, show us that they have laid their bets on a, not a chaotic world. They've laid their bets on a world that makes sense. They've laid their bets on a world where stimuli are reliably associated. And so I quote John uh, Damien, an animal learning guy, for the pairings of, of uh, conditioned and unconditioned stimuli to be functional in a natural environment, such pairings must be a feature of the natural environment. Rats, dogs, pigeons know that reality is not meaningless. The final myth uh, on the schedule is this idea that, meaning, that the meaningful life is a rare accomplishment. Look at, if meaning in life is about these things, I once had a, we had a reviewer say, if this stuff is true, if you think about all the routines we have in our lives, life would be brimming with meaning, with the brimming was in italics. And I said, yeah, well, let's see, is it? This slide is an epidemiology of meaning in life. Just to go through a few of the highlights, um, these are all representative samples in the health and retirement study. Did you feel that your life has meaning? Yes or no? 95% said yes. The Baylor Religion Survey, do you feel your life has an important purpose or meaning? 83% agreed or strongly agreed. The uh, most recent Oishi and Diener paper with this worldwide sample of 132 nations, do you feel your life has an important purpose or meaning? At the level of nation, 91% said yes. Generally speaking, people say that their lives are meaningful. This is a summary of a project that my student, Samantha Heitzelman, and I did, where we looked at the average level of meaning in life espoused by people in a variety of um, different studies. The, this is uh, from the MLQ Presence of Meaning subscale, with an N of 27,635. The average level of meaning in life was 4.56 on a seven point scale, which is significantly above the midpoint of that scale. 
Life is actually pretty meaningful. This is the distribution of the means for meaning in life ratings. And I, I'm not going to have time to go into it, but there are some samples in here. There are people who are in psychiatric hospitals. Life is pretty meaningful for most people. Now, I know you're thinking, no, it isn't. <laughs> I thought this, you know, you'd think this would be kind of good news, but people don't seem to find it that. Um, because why? You're thinking, but the senselessness that I know exists, the suffering of children, natural disasters, horrible, senseless acts of violence, boring faculty meetings, these moments of meaninglessness, these people are crazy. And here's what I have to say to you, learned social psychologists. Do you think it's the case that the ease with which an idea can be brought to mind is an accurate predictor of its frequency in the world? I thought that's called, what is it? Oh yeah, the availability heuristic. That is a heuristic that is sometimes accurate and sometimes leads to bias. I'm absolutely certain that learned social psychologists would never neglect this important base rate information that I am providing to you. <laughs> Here's the funny paradox. Psychologists have long considered meaning in life two things at once. It is at once essential for survival and impossible to get. It can't be both of those things. If meaning in life is adaptive, then we must be able to experience it. If it's impossible to get, we would, all, we would have long been, since been rendered extinct. So long, homo sapiens, dang, too bad about that need for the experience of meaning. I think we can come down on the other side and notice that perhaps the experience of meaning in life is adaptive. Perhaps, like other subjective states, it provides us information about whether the world makes sense, about whether we're connected to other people, about how things are going in this world that we live in. And that brings me to a bonus myth, number six. <laughs> Some people who aren't here today like Roy Baumeister, snowed in, have suggested this other myth, that is that meaning in life is a first world problem. Nobody uh, who has to worry about survival is sitting around worrying about meaning in life. Meaning in life is not a first world problem. Meaning in life solves an age old problem that we share with all other species of f making sure that we are in an environment that makes sense. Have I wrecked meaning in life? Maybe, maybe I have, I don't know. Right, we, we ever we studied good things in human existence, we have this tendency to feel like we're harming them by bringing the lens of science upon them. And I wanna make it clear that I think that, that isn't the case. Open, coming to meaning in life not as a mystery but as something that can be demystified allows us to start to understand this fascinating topic if I may uh, share my favorite quote from William James, all goods are disguised in the vulgarity of their concomitants in this workaday world, but woe to him who can only recognize them when he thinks them in their pure and abstract form. Meaning in life is this good, right? And we put it way up on a pedestal. Woe to us if we let it stay there, right? It's only by approaching it as scientists and by recognizing its vulgar concomitants of being in a pretty good mood, being accepted by people we care about, and living in a world that makes sense, can we start to understand that experience? So we cannot, we don't always have to go up the mountain to the sage and ask for the secrets of meaning in life. We can just visit the middle-aged woman in the polka dotted dress <laughs> and revisit. <laughs> And what he has to tell you now, and what I would like to say, get over it. <laughs> yes, we're allowed to study this fascinating construct, and we can bring the lens of science on it. Uh, that's, to me, what makes my life as a scientist meaningful. Thank you.